Viewer guide, what to watch for in Tuesday's Kamala Harris, Donald Trump presidential debate. Chris Graham here on Augusta Free Press. All right, let's go through the notebook here of items. Harris, Trump is going to lie. Democratic Party nominee Kamala Harris is prepping people, getting ready to tune in to Tuesday's presidential debate for the torrent of lies that will come out of the mouth of ex-president Donald Trump. Quote, we should be prepared for the fact that he is not burdened by telling the truth, Harris said. We should be prepared for the fact that he is probably going to speak a lot of untruths. That's what she said in an interview with syndicated radio host Ricky Smiley broadcast on Monday. And I mean, yeah, Trump lies. And as a strategy, if we can say that he uses it as a strategy, it's worked for him. I mean, honestly, what the issue is here is Trump lies like the rest of us blink. Reflexively, uncontrollably, unconsciously. Harris isn't telling you something that you don't already know. She's just prepping the battlefield, as it were. Now, the quote from her from the interview, he is going to lie. He has a playbook that he has used in the past, be it, you know, his attacks on President Obama or Hillary Clinton. So we should expect some of that might come out, too. Yeah, that's that's a given. Next uh, headline, dumb questions. We like to pretend that we want questions from the moderators, quote, on the issues, unquote. But we neither actually want that. You know, there is a reason C-SPAN doesn't get the ratings that Fox News gets. Nor do we actually expect to even get that. World News Tonight anchor David Muir and uh, ABC News Live Prime anchor Lindsey Davis will serve as the moderators for this debate. Now, will they ask Harris and Trump to delineate their positions on how to give Americans better access to affordable health insurance? No, they're not. <laughs> You'll probably get one on inflation, though it's highly unlikely that Trump will be pressed on his harebrained scheme to impose tariffs on foreign goods and how that would exacerbate inflation worries. Expect a run of personality questions. Why are Democrats referring to Republicans as weird? Was Trump wrong to question Harris, Harris's ethnicity? Will the two agree to another debate? If we get to anything in foreign policy, odds are that we get one question and it will be about Israel which isn't near the top of our actual national security interests, but is in the wheelhouse of Trump, or so he thinks, given how much he talks about it on the trail. Now that leads me to my first dirty little secret to these things. The moderators will almost, ex will almost certainly ignore the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is, for reasons including the threat to NATO, which Trump wants to destabilize, our most important foreign policy issue. And China our top economic uh, geopolitical rival, because those are issues where Trump won't be able to sound coherent. Here's while, where I'll let you in on a dirty little secret with all this, the questions that are going to be tilted so that they seem fair to Trump. This is why you saw Harris working the rest with her comments on the radio about Trump being ready to tell lies. It's an uphill battle. Trump and his stooges have been working the refs for nine years to get the media to play things in his favor. This is how he can have press conferences with no questions from the media and not get called out on it. How he can awful, offer up garbled word salads and have it cleaned up for him in post-production into being reasonably coherent sound bites. How pollsters can put their thumbs on the scale in the crosstab and make, make the polls say whatever they want them to say. Donald Trump as a viable, serious politician is entirely a creation of the American news media, which is more than willing to elevate a carnival huckster like Trump over boring politicians like Jeb Bush. Remember Jeb Bush? The reason is because Trump will say and do anything, no matter how stupid or outlandish, to get attention. And attention to the networks, to the New York Times and Washington Post and others, means ratings, it means subscribers, and ultimately means money. The second dirty little secret, you're going to think your favorite candidate is the winner. Uh, whoever that is, no matter how poorly they did, no matter how good the other candidate did. Oh, sure, no doubt a lot of us are going to be watching. We might get close to the record viewership for one of these presidential debate thingies. It was set back in 2016. One of the Donald Trump-Hillary Clinton debates had 84 million people watching. That's just astounding. That's close to Super Bowl level, right? If the polls are to, believe, to be believed, roughly 10 to 12% of us are either undecided or on the fence enough to change our minds between now and Election Day. That's hard to believe to me, but, I mean, yeah, I can kind of see it all right. Uh, wishy-washy people shouldn't have the right to vote in the first place. But anyway, okay, so that would translate, 10 to 12% would translate if we do get close to that 80 more, 84 million viewer mark to around 8 or 9 million of us being in the target audience for both the campaigns uh, in this TV show. The rest of us are watching to root for our favorite team, to hoot and holler when our candidate gets in a zinger, 
to howl and protest when the other side says something out of bounds and to complain about the dumb moderators and also to play drinking game. Okay, that's where I'll finish this up with. Take a shot. Here's where you should take a shot. And all these are listed on Augusta Free Press's website. So don't think you need to take notes here, but take a shot when Trump calls Harris a communist. Take a shot when Harris calls out another Trump lie. Take a shot when Harris mentions Roe v. Wade. Take a shot also when Trump claims most people wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. <laughs> uh, take a shot when Trump mentions Afghanistan. Take a shot when Harris points out that Trump has called military heroes suckers and losers. Take a shot when Trump tries to say he's the best thing that's ever happened to Israel. Take a shot when Kamala Harris says the words ceasefire in succession. Take a shot when Trump goes on and on about inflation. Take a shot when Trump eviscerates Trump's tariff idea. Take a shot when Trump brags about his crowd sizes and whines that the media never talks about his big crowds. Take a shot when Harris makes a certain hand gesture when she talks about Trump's fixation with crowd sizes. That was great from Barack Obama last month. Uh, take a shot when Trump complains about being called weird and then uses the word weird 19 times in a row to reinforce his point. Take a shot when Harris agrees with Trump that he's weird. Uh, take a shot when Trump, who most certainly is not weird in his own reckoning, uh, then says immigrants in Ohio are eating cats. You, if you haven't heard that story, look it up. It's weird. Uh, take a shot when Harris, after Trump says immigrants in Ohio are eating cats, then puts Trump in a front face lock and chokes him out. That's probably not going to happen, but take a shot if it does. Hey, be careful, though. Uh, there is a such thing as alcohol poisoning. If you have any questions for me, any comments, any observations to share, any news tips, please feel free to email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.